Hi there and welcome to Test Case Lab. Here's a short tutorial on how to use basic features. As you log in, you will see your company profile dashboard. At dashboard, you may see the overall statistics of your company account and activity stream. Statistics represents the amount of all test runs which are currently in progress in all your projects. You can also see the general amount of test cases, test plans, and members in each project. Activity Stream shows you the list of all recent actions performed by all your company account employees. Now let's go to the test cases page. You may see that the interface is divided into three sections and the navigation menu. In navigation menu, you may browse your cases, plans, runs, and settings. If you have multiple projects or companies, you may select them in the drop-down menu. There is a list of test case categories on the left. It means you may group cases into different categories. In the center, you will see a general list of test cases. And on the right, you will find different properties of a particular test case and functional buttons. Now let's try to create a category. If you want, you may rename it. You can also move it or make it as a subcategory. After that, let's create test cases inside the category we just created. Once a case is created, it's easy to modify its featured properties, change priority, add tags, fill description, Steps, Expected Result, and Attach Files if required. If you copy a link of any test case, the other agents who have access to this project will open that case directly. If another user is currently working on the test case, you will see an alert. Any test case may be easily copied or deleted. Search option and filters will let you easily find required test case by the keyword or its property. Any test case inside a particular category can be manually reordered. Simply drag and drop the case to desired position. You can even move any test case or test cases to other category. With Test Case Lab Tool, you can also perform bulk actions on your test cases. Click on Select button, choose Required Test Cases, and then apply any property you need. Let us now create our first test plan. The interface of Plans page is quite similar to Cases page. Once Plan is created, click on Add button to fill it with particular test cases. Or select them all. Inside the test plan, you may still edit any parameter of a test case. You can also perform multiple actions on test cases, reorder them, or even copy to another test plan, or exclude it if it's not required. When the plan is completed, we can proceed to test runs. At Runs page, you will see the list of available test runs. You can filter them or create a new one on the basis of the existing test plan. If you need, you can assign to the test run any amount of users who are included into current project. Every assigned user will receive an email notification. When you open a created test run, all cases from initially selected plan will be uploaded to it. 
If you forgot to assign a user to test run when creating it, you can also do that later. Still, you may edit the content according to your needs or rearrange the position of test cases. Inside the run, every test case has its status. When the status for a particular test case is set, this information will appear in Executions tab, so you can easily track the test case performance for each test run where it is included. When another user is processing a particular test case, you will see an alert and the case will be locked. All cases with failed status may be reported to your bug tracker if the integration was previously set up. As soon as you complete the test run, you can easily download a report of your own needs. So that's all we wanted to show you in this video. Thank you again for watching this video tutorial and sign up for our services.